What's going on everyone, Manny here, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do yet again another video about the Peacemaker products that I purchased uh, recently. Uh, more specifically, we're going to take a look at the Beastmaker 2000. Um, and this is going to be more of a hands-on uh, video today. So the, the goal of this video is basically to find out if I can hang all the holes in the first place. So as you can see, I'm doing a couple of warm-up hangs here in the background already. Um, and we are also going to take a look at the size more accurately um, of some of these Beastmaker holes. Because, you know, with my last review, when I reviewed the micros as well, and I pointed out that they differ quite a lot in the rounding, um, one person in the comments pointed out that even on the Beastmaker 2000, there are sometimes different holes on different Beastmaker 2000s. So I'm definitely going to measure mine and going to compare them to the Beastmaker that I have situated in my climbing gym. And yeah, see if these Beastmaker 2000s are actually accurate. Now first of all, I started testing the presumably um, hardest hold on the Beastmaker 2000, which is this sloper here. This is the 45 degree sloper and before we start we actually have to know that this actually exists in four different difficulty modes really. Uh, if you include this little side wall of the next sloper with your fingers, if you touch it, it's actually getting a lot easier. If you're using the thumb below down there and kind of use it a little bit as a pinch on this edge down there, it's also getting a lot easier. So the hardest mode of this um, 45 degree sloper um, is actually when you are wandering with your hands towards the edge of the whole beast maker thing so you're going to really go to the outside as you can see in this test hang here of the beast maker not touching the sidewall of the adjoining sloper so to say and not using your thumb down below to pinch that stuff together and actually, after my warm-up straight straight um, after it, I couldn't, I wasn't able to hold it. It was quite easy to hold it when using the sidewalls, um, but without the sidewalls, it was quite hard. So I decided after some time of trying, maybe I need a little bit more warm-up, warmed-up fingers, so to say, and I'm going to try that one again later. Now the next thing that I wanted to test basically was the center edge. The really classic um, one arm hang edge, so to say, of the Beastmaker 2000. And before I started with hanging, I wanted to actually measure it to see how big it is. Now, apparently, the standard for this is seems to be 23 millimeters. That's what I found the most online. And when I measured mine, it came pretty consistently out at um, 22 millimeters, as you can see here in this shot. I hopefully this is I hope that this this is somehow visible. Um, now obviously we can't really say that this is an inaccuracy because we don't really know how accurate the methods of measuring of other people are and um, who knows how accurate the method of measuring of my method here is. All I can say is that for me this edge is pretty much exactly 22 millimeters. Um, as usual with this edge I'm pretty, I'm pretty solidly able to hang it one handed with my right hand and a little bit less solidly able to, to hang it with my left hand. Now what is quite interesting when it comes to these hanging styles here, and this is something that always fascinated me when it comes to one arm tanks, is that they are actually quite significantly easier when performed on the bent arm. At least for me this is the case. When I go for the straight arm, as you can see here in these shots, um, it's a lot more difficult for me to hold myself on there, especially for my left hand, which is my, my weaker hand. And I always get more of this um, turning motion into my hang, which is really just a sign of um, that you are actually still a little bit too weak to hold it solidly, this edge. Because I know that, I know that when I grab a jog um, one-handed, I don't get this turn. So when I'm strong enough basically to grab a jog, um, then I don't get this turn, so I'm actually a little bit too weak still to hold it completely solidly. But anyway, let's move on to the lower edges on the side of the Beastmaker, which um, supposedly should have a size of around 13 millimeters, according to the most people on the internet that I found. And when I measured mine, um, it came out pretty consistently at 14 millimeters, as you can see in this shot here. Now. Now obviously I had to measure both of these holes and the other one came out at 14 millimeters 
as well quite consistently so i was happy about that to see that um, at least the holes on my beast maker are symmetrical you know so that I don't get an asymmetric um, training stimulus in here onto my uh, fingers one thing i forgot to mention is that i think with the center hole of the beast maker it is the case that it is slightly in cut i don't think that this is the case with the more side with the smaller side edges here and another thing that's interesting always with these um, edges, they are quite a lot smaller than the center hold. I mean, roughly 10 millimeters smaller, one centimeter smaller, that's quite a lot. But they are not so much harder to actually hold one-handed. I mean, I'm, as you can see, I'm still not able to do it quite solidly. But still, I have the feeling that actually I'm not too far away from it. And this is something that's quite fascinating. I think this has something to do with finger anatomy as well. But um, if you have really small fingers, it doesn't really make a lot of difference whether you're grabbing the center hold or the hold at the sides. The holds at the sides, I want to say. Um, yeah, I've always found that quite interesting. Let's see how my progress is going to look like at, on these holds in the future. Now I warmed up my two finger pocket... Um, uh, pocket mode basically here my two finger pocket fingers which is my middle and my ring finger first of all i wanted to test the monos the shallower monos of the beast maker if i'm able to hang them solidly and yeah i have to say that went out it worked pretty fine they are quite painful because the rounding is kind of sharp but still um, they are pretty possible to hang on to i would say now the next thing I wanted to test out is these holds that are that I personally always thought are the hardest hold on the beast maker by far. It's these shallow um, two finger pockets here. Not this one that I'm grabbing at the moment. This is just for comparison. This is the good one. I mean these uh, shallow ones here. Now as you can see they've got quite a substantial um, slope in there. It's maybe it's all already a 45 degree um, slope basically I don't know I mean it would be pretty crazy if this if this is similar to the actual 45 degree sloper when you have a look at it it looks like it but um, anyway I thought I'm definitely not gonna be able to do it and then I tried it once and I was almost there so I thought okay I'm gonna brush these holes a little bit and give it another shot and I think in this shot I'm still not able to hold them um, quite solidly but uh, I think in the next shot, the next shot is going to be the one where I'm able to grab them. Now, this is something that's really fascinating for me, how quickly your fingers can get used to a certain hold, you know. I tried this basically for three times and then my fingers got so used to it. In this shot, I'm hanging them quite solidly, as you can see. Now, I would have never expected this when uh, I touched these holes for the first time. I thought, okay, this is going to be the last Ooh, hold on the Beast Maker nice. 2000 that I'm able to hold because they are so bad. But I'm quite strong. This is something that I noticed. I'm quite strong at two finger pockets. Um, this is something that I noticed when I got climbing, when I climbed in the Franken Jura for the first time, where there's a lot of pockety limestone climbing and a lot of really bouldery roots on that. And yeah, this strength on two finger pockets, I think, is depicted on this um, slopey, on these slopey two finger pockets here as well. Um, grabbing them with my middle finger and my ring finger was kind of possible after some warming up specifically for that. Now, once that was done, I decided to go back to these 45 degrees um, uh, slopey slopers, so to say, again, to try them again and in the hardest mode which is the one as I previously explained um, without touching the side walls of the adjoining sloper and without using the thumbs down for pinching um, for me personally as you can see I'm almost able to hold it but um, I still couldn't do it this session now I have to say here that um, on this specific day I was outdoor climbing already I projected a pretty bouldery pretty hard in my opinion 8b plus so who knows um, who, who knows how much power was left in the tank here still. But anyway, that goes for all the holes that I tested during this test session. And so I can say that definitely for me, the 45 degree sloper is the hardest hold on the Beast Maker, at least in this hard mode constellation where you don't touch the side walls and the, um, using the thumb down below on this edge here to pinch it. Now, apparently, also someone commented um, uh, in 
the comment section of my previous Beastmaker review video and he said that especially also these 45 degree slopers they are really different on different beast makers in um, difficulty. It depends really a lot on the grain of the wood, as it seems, and on the roughness of the surface, so to say. And it also is, a, is very condition dependent. Now, if you're having a very, let's say it's a warm day outside and it's also a little bit warmer in your room, then it's a lot harder to hold than when it's cold and, you know, when the friction is on point, when the air humidity is on point and stuff like that. So I'm going to continue to test that in the future. I think I want to be able to hold all the holes on the Beast Maker at least. And this is the last one that I'm missing. So yeah, hardest mode on the 45 sloper. Um, the Beast Maker hole, I'm not able to hold this one. All the other ones went down pretty solidly, I have to say. Surprisingly, because I never expected these bad two finger pockets to work out. Um, so much for this hands-on Beast Maker 2000 review. Um, I hope you've got something from it. Uh, yeah, I'll see you soon in the next video, guys. Hope you're doing fine. Bye. This is the absolute hard mode.